Meet the Volvo C40 Recharge. Looks familiar, doesn't it? That's because it is. Actually, the sister model to the Volvo XC40 Recharge, but with a few tweaks, like this sloping coupe roof. And it's got more range. It's got 273 miles of range, which is more than the XC40 Recharge. It's also got more horsepower. This has got 408 horsepower, meaning it's really quite powerful. The C40 and the XC40 Recharge look quite similar, but the C40 is sportier. It's got this sporty looking body kit, and of course it's got that sloping roof as well, which give it a super aerodynamic look. It's a bit like comparing the Audi Q4 e-tron and the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback. Size-wise, compared to its sister car, it's the same width, but it's got a lower roof and it is actually longer. In terms of charging, it will give you 100% charge in 12 hours with a seven kilowatt wall box. And at a 50 kilowatt public charger, it will actually charge from 20 to 80% in just an hour. Not bad. This particular model is called the Twin Pro version, but it's now being replaced by the Twin Ultimate, but it's the same thing. It's basically the top spec twin motor C40 recharge. You've also got a single motor version coming later on in the year. This car retails at just under £57,500. So it's not cheap, but it's actually cheaper than the equivalent XC40 recharge in the same spec. Little disclaimer, this was correct at the time of filming, but Volvo do change spec names and prices quite a lot of notice. So just bear that in mind. You're going to get metallic paint as standard, which I really like. There's lots of different colors to choose from, one of which is this blue color. This is called Fjord Blue, I'm partial to a bit of blue, as you can see. You also get these 20 inch alloys as standard. You also get the LED headlights and this covered grill, which is of course a bit of a burn of contention. Some people like the covered grill, some don't, but you don't need to cool as much down with an electric car. So that's the reason why grills are starting to look a bit different. Let me show you what it's like inside. So inside, it's laid out same as its sister model, the XC40 Recharge, but you've got these lovely fully vegan seats. Everything in the C40 Recharge is fully vegan. There is vegan options with the XC40 Recharge, but there isn't anything other than vegan options in the C40 Recharge. And I've got to be honest, I really quite like this. As much as I love leather and I love the smell of leather, this is a really high quality vegan interior. You've got this multifunction steering wheel. You've also got this fully digital dash and you've got the same infotainment screen as what you've got in the XC40 Recharge. You get heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which are controlled by this infotainment system. Now, usually that would annoy me, but because they're always consistently here, it's not that bad. So this is how you control the heated steering wheel and the heated seats, same for the passenger. And also your air conditioning is in here too which some people may find annoying. But like I said, because it's always down here, it's not that much of a big deal. You do have to go through the infotainment system for your range though, when it comes to miles. On your digital dash, it's going to show you your percentage of range, which actually I don't mind as long as I'm doing short distances, but for long distances, it would be great to be able to see the miles of range that you've got. As you can see here, I've got 75 miles of range left. Whereas as you can see, I've got 36% shown on the dash. It doesn't actually give me the amount of miles that I have, which actually has contributed to no range anxiety, but I definitely want to be able to see the miles of range here on long distance drives. But I guess you can still access it. So I guess that's down to you as an individual. Other creature comforts include things like this wireless phone charger. You've also got Harman Kardon sound system and lots of parking kit like this. You get this 360 degree parking camera, which is really handy. I really like these, good feature. You also get front, rear and side parking sensors and blind spot assistant, which makes the rear window much less of a problem. The rear window, because it's tinted and really small, means that you can't really see much out of it, especially at night time, not a thing. But because you've got all this help, all these cameras and sensors, doesn't really make much of a difference. Just might take a bit, <laughs> a bit of getting used to looking out the back window and seeing nothing at all, especially at night. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto aren't available just yet, but I am told that it is coming. Until then, you've got a Bluetooth system, which connects to your phone, 
got DAB radio, you've got Google Maps and Google Assistant. Google Assistant is actually really, really helpful, but Apple CarPlay would make a good system great. It's a really comfy car to sit in and I can adjust my seat electronically to get the perfect driving position. I like it. Something else that I love is there's loads of places to store stuff, put your cups, You've got plenty of storage space in the centre console. And of course, you've got this little bin, which I love. You can put all your rubbish in there, tip it out in your house and put it back in. I love thoughtful stuff like that. Thanks, Volvo. Thanks for thinking of us because that is just a lifesaver. You've also got plenty of places to charge your phone. You've got the wireless charging pad and you've got this 12 volt socket and two USC ports. No USBs though. Overall, from a driver's point of view, it's great. But what's it like in the rear seats? Let's have a look. As to be expected in the back, we've got less headroom, which isn't a problem for me because I'm five foot four. But if you've got taller passengers, just be aware of that. It's quite dark in here because of the dark interior and the tinted windows, but the pan roof lighten things up a little bit. I'm really quite comfortable in here. I would say though, for the middle passenger, they've definitely drawn the short straw though, because there's a transmission tunnel and it's not the biggest space ever. I would prefer a bit more space to store stuff. There's not loads of room in the side of the door for drinks, for example. I don't kind of know what drink could fit in there, but I guess you could put it in here. There's no USB ports in the Volvo C40 recharge. Not sure why, and I really wanted one, but I can get down with USC. Just make sure that you buy the right cable. So there is a sacrifice on boot space for that sexy coupe back. It's got 414 litres in here, which isn't that bad, but it's not as much as Rivals and it is less than the XC40 recharge. You do get the loading floor though, with those bag hooks that I like, which mean that your shopping isn't gonna go all over the boot, because that is so annoying. Use that last night, it was great. You've got some space under the loading floor here too. And of course you can actually put the seats down, which is great. A redeeming quality about this car is also how much it can tow. It can tow up to 1800 kilograms, which make it one of the best in its class for towing. It's got powered tailgate, and of course you can open it by wafting your leg under here. It's got hands-free tailgate action, if I can find where you waft the foot. <laughs> you do, it is somewhere under here somewhere, I'm sure. Or maybe this one doesn't have it. <laughs> no, it's not happening. It's made my tyres very dirty. Something else that's really redeeming about this car is how fast it is. It can do zero to 60 in just 4.7 seconds. Let me show you. This thing is fast, but not if you don't want it to be. The car corners really well. It doesn't move like an SUV because of that. 408 horsepower and that instant torque. It's really nippy and it, it holds the road well. It's all wheel drive too, which is great. I've not seen any talks about a, a front wheel drive or rear wheel drive version coming, but I think all wheel drive is what people want now anyway. Look at this guy, is he for real? Yeah, it drives lovely, really nice. I think that this has got the edge over the XC40 recharge when it comes to drive, just because that extra power, you really can feel it. Right, so I'm letting my foot off now and it's starting to break for me. I absolutely love that. So much fun. There we go, get foot down here. Straight away, you can feel it. Absolutely phenomenal. This is fun. Honestly, when you get used to one pedal braking, it's perfect. You don't have to have the one pedal braking. You can adjust the braking regeneration, but the true one pedal braking, like what this has got, similar to Tesla, similar to the Ford Mustang Mach-E, it just makes for a really pleasant, enjoyable drive, especially if you like to go fast. Corners, just letting off, not having to brake. Definitely is a better way to drive in my book. Overall, I think that Volvo have made a really great contender in what is already a very competitive space. The C40 Recharge definitely can stand up to the lights of the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback or the Ford Mustang Mach-E, which are great cars in themselves. Personally, I think that the C40 Recharge actually does have an edge. In terms of design, build quality and drive, I would actually say that it's better than its rivals, which is quite a bold statement, but one that I'm willing to make because I truly believe it. Of course, it depends on what's important to you. It doesn't have as much range as its rivals, 
and it doesn't have as much boot space but it is faster and it has got a better build quality in my opinion it also has got better towing capacity this car can tow up to 1800 kilograms which is a lot making it one of the best cars for towing in the electric car space right now so the elephant in the room the burning question is definitely is this better than its sibling the xc40 recharge i have driven both and i really really liked the xc40 recharge but for me the c40 recharge has got the edge i'd say if you're wanting more speed more range and you don't mind sacrificing on boot space and headroom this is the one for you but if things like practicality in terms of headroom and boot space are more important to you than the XC40 Recharge, it's probably going to suit you a bit better. So what do you think to the Volvo C40 Recharge? Do you prefer it over its rivals? What about over its sister car, the XC40 Recharge? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more amazing car content, if I do say so myself. <laughs>